Well, thank you uh, very much indeed, Mr. President. I, I must say, Alan, that's some th sore throat you've got. <laughs> Can I begin by making it clear for the avoidance of doubt that I will not be partaking of Cameron's concoction this evening? <laughs> Uh, it sounds like a very good description of the coalition government, and I suspect it would taste. It's really hard to argue that this House this evening should have confidence <coughs> in David Cameron when it's pretty obvious to those of us who sit on the other benches in the House of Commons that so many of his own <coughs> members of Parliament, Conservative MPs, have very little confidence in him. <coughs> Two of them have just jumped ship, and the rest of them are weighing up whether it would be a reckless step or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have to follow. I have to follow in the footsteps of the proposer to do the same. They're trying to work out when the by-election in Rochester and Stroud is over whether it would be a sensible thing to do. And the rest of the Conservatives, the one thing they love to do more than anything else is, as the Prime Minister once said, bang on about Europe. Now, I feel sorry for the Prime Minister. You may be surprised if I say that. Because he's disliked by his party. He must be wondering, why am I in the position that I find myself in today? After all, we lost the last election back. That is a fact. Not badly enough. <laughs> he, tried, he tried to persuade the British people that somehow the Labour government caused a global economic meltdown. I would simply make this observation. How did investing in new schools, learning support assistance, neighbourhood police officers and the magnificent cancer treatment centre at St James's Hospital in Leeds how did those things bring Lehman Brothers to its knees? Because if someone could offer an explanation, I would be very happy to receive it. <laughs> now, we have heard from Alan Duncan this evening, yes indeed, the British economy is growing, yes indeed, unemployment is falling. And yet, instead of being the 10 or 20 points ahead in the opinion polls that the Prime Minister must think he deserves to be, he is behind. Now, what is the reason for the fact that he is behind in the polls? The reason is the reason why this House tonight should vote in favour of the motion. The truth is that the British people do not think that this government is on their side. The British people do not believe that the Prime Minister understands their lives and the struggles that many of them are going through. Now, yesterday we heard what Lloyd Freud, Freud thinks about... What he really thinks about disabled people, I just want to quote his words. He said, <coughs> I know exactly who you mean. Where actually, as you say, they're not worth the full wage. This is the welfare reform minister. Now, he's apologised for what he said, but why did he think it in the first place? And the truth is, it tells you something about the character of this government. Because there is, I would argue, a lack of empathy and understanding that runs like a thread through what this government has done. And if you are looking for proof, I'll give you one example. Cast your mind back to April of last year. Now, the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, are very, very fond of telling us these are tough times, and they are. Tough decisions need to be made, and they do. But what were the two decisions that the government made in April of last year? The first thing they did, and my honourable friend referred to it earlier, the first thing that they did was to introduce the bedroom tax. Now, <coughs> over 2,000 of my constituents are affected by the bedroom tax. Why? because they are on low incomes and they claim housing benefit. And what is the bedroom tax trying to do? And I want to be very clear. I think it's immoral. I think it tries to force people out of their family homes, away from their neighbours, their community and their friends, even though, <coughs> even though the government knows there aren't the smaller properties for those people to move into. That is why it's a tax. 
Most of my constituents can't move. And frankly, faced with the threat, as we would do if we were faced with the threat of losing their homes, what are they trying to do? They're desperately trying to hang on in their family home and paying money that they simply can't afford. Now, I'm sorry that Baroness Williams wasn't able to join us here this evening because I have the great, greatest respect for Baroness Williams, but I would just say about the other partners in the coalition that to start with, the Liberal Democrats voted cheerfully for the bedroom tax. Then they decided that they were getting a bit anxious about it and recently they voted for a bill which will help us to <coughs> limit some of the impact. Now we're very well used to Liberal Democrats facing in two directions at almost the same time. <laughs> and on this occasion I am glad my constituents to be glad of their flexibility and change of heart. Now you may be saying, well that is a tough decision. I may feel uncomfortable about it but you know, tough times, tough decisions. Remind yourself, what was the other decision the government took in April of last year? It said, you know, one thing we've got to do, we've got to reduce taxation on people who earn more than £150,000. We have to do it. We know it's tough, we know it's difficult, but tough times require tough decisions. And as a result, they reduced the top rate of tax from 50% to 45%. And I would say to the Chancellor, where are here this evening? Well, how tough was that decision for you to take? And if you were to ask me for one reason why this government deserves neither the confidence of this House nor to win the next general election, it is those two decisions. Because they tell you everything about the rotten, and I use the word advisedly, the rotten values that this government stands up for. And what is the consequence of that? Those on the lowest incomes are facing the toughest time of all. If you doubt it, look around you in Oxford. Go and visit your food banks and ask them what is going on there. Of course I'll give way. Uh, is the right one to speak well the fact that this government has taken millions of people on the lowest incomes out of the tax? I'm going, to deal, I'm going to deal with that one. Of course I'm well aware of that, but is the Honourable Member also aware that last year 900,000 people had to go to a food bank to be able to feed their family? Now, yeah. I, was in, I, was in the House, I was in the House of Commons last year where Nicky Morgan's predecessor, Michael Gove, said that the reason there had been a growth in food banks in this country was that people, he said it, they're not very good at managing their finances. I could not believe it when he said that, and he has never apologised for those words. What's the truth? The truth is, it takes a lot of courage, a lot of courage to go up to someone you've never met before and say, hello, I'm sorry, I can't feed my family this weekend, will you help me? I have five food banks in my constituency. 900,000 people in the sixth richest country in the world. And it's not just people who are not able to work, it includes people who are working but earn too little. That's why we want to increase the minimum wage. And when someone comes to you, as a woman in my constituency did recently, and said with tears running down her cheeks, I work, but I cannot earn enough to feed my family and I have to go to a food bank. It's not right, she said to me. It's not right. And I would say to you, Alan, massive success. Massive success. No, it's not right. It's a scandal. It's wrong that this happens in our country, that people have to throw themselves upon the kindness of strangers. Now, how could we help them? Yes, we could get rid of the bedroom tax. Yes, we could freeze energy prices, and we will. Yes, we'll raise the minimum wage. Yes, we'll build more homes. But the truth is that a lot of people look at politics, us on both sides, and say, we're not entirely sure, you know, that things are going to change. You lot promise one thing and do another. In the case of the Liberal Democrats, that is, of course, entirely the case. <laughs> but the truth is... We can change things for the better, and where the Honourable Member and I have something in common was on Monday of this week. Now, thousands of people wrote to their Member of Parliament, not because they thought Westminster, waste of time, bunch of rubbish. They wrote to us to say, please vote 
to recognise the state of Palestine. And I pay tribute to the Honourable Member who marched through the division lobbies with me and many others. I'm sorry that the government didn't support the motion. And what that shows is we have the capacity, if we have the right values, to change things for the better. And I finish on this point. We're in tough times. We've got a big deficit. But you know, we had an even bigger deficit, even bigger debts at the end of the Second World War. And what the Labour government then did and showed was that using the most powerful instruments in our democracy, ideas and a pen and paper, you can vote to establish a health service. You can vote to bring about a minimum wage. And at the next election, you have the chance, many of you, to vote to change the government. And I hope you will do so, and I hope you'll vote for the motion tonight.